All right, so these are the techniques we've already looked at. Penal technique, grievance remedial technique, private arranging technique, administrative regulatory technique, conferral of social benefit technique. Those ones were propounded by Paul Summers in his article, The Technique Elements in Law. Then constitutive technique and fiscal technique were propounded by John Farrar and Anthony Dugdale in the legal method textbook then i'm adding in an eighth one the state regulatory technique which is the one that we will all try and round up the last four today we've done the first four already so we'll try and finish off this last four today so let's start off with conferral of social benefit technique conferral of social benefit technique for today i hope we'll have enough time to round up the last part today conferral of social benefits now from the word itself to confer a social benefit on the citizens you'll be able to get the meaning of the technique from the word itself to confer to impose to give a benefit to the members of the public to the members of society that's what happens in conferral of social benefit technique in this technique you will find out that the government maybe they've done some fiscal spending and then they use the resources that they get from the tax taxation or from the licensing to provide specific social benefits to individuals these benefits might be in the area of health in the area of health, for example, you realize that there are government hospitals, right? And if you go to a government hospital, you pay less than if you go to a private hospital. Is that not true? Yes. So the government creates, for example, there are even some hospitals like Hospital for the Insane, like there is a, there is a, for mentally unsound people. For example, you have psychiatric hospitals in Enugu here. It's not many people that can actually fund a psychiatric hospital. So the government steps in and builds one. There is one at Arrow, there is another one at Yaba. Now, these are instances government steps in to take care of the health of its citizens. Now, in education, the government can also bring in benefits in education. Now, for example, for those who are lecturers, you know that there's something they call Education Trust Fund. Education Trust Fund. That allows schools to have facilities built under the Education Trust Fund. They build facilities. They allow lecturers to go on conferences. The government funds it. It's part of conferral of social benefits in the area of education. When you come, for example, building highways, we have a petroleum trust fund, the PTF, that was used to build a lot of the highways that we have currently operating, uh, uh, functioning in Nigeria. Now, that was through the petroleum trust fund, which the government had acquired resources and used it to, to confer benefits in the area of constructing highways. Now, there is something we call social security. It hasn't become very functional in Nigeria. That's where, for example, those who don't have jobs get unemployment benefits outside the country. Or you have something like old age benefits. When you're growing old, the, the state is taking care of you. Are you listening? Are you listening? Yes. Social security benefits. It's not very functional in Nigeria. But in other countries, you have unemployment benefits, you have old age benefits. Now, in Nigeria, we have what we call the Contributory Pension Scheme. Contributory Pension Scheme. Contributory Pension Scheme. In which the government and individuals get together to enable you, to enable the workers when they retire to have a pension. Now, but other countries have serious social security benefits, and we are still putting that in Nigeria. Now, the law comes in, in, in Sumner's work, he tried to show 
how the law comes in into this into this control of shabbatic technique he explains for example that the law when you're talking about conferral of certain benefits the law might be used number one to bring up a system of taxation a system of taxation from where the funds can be collected so if, if the court, court can say okay in order to fund this particular benefit we are going to tax everybody so so amount it's through the law that you bring in that system of taxation it's through the law that you will define who are those entitled, who are the beneficiaries, who are the beneficiaries of the scheme, who are the beneficiaries of the social benefits, and also states what are the qualifications or the conditions that they have to meet before they can, qualifications or conditions that they will have to meet before they can be entitled to the benefit. It's also through the law that you will structure the administrative body, structure the administrative body that will run the scheme, that will run the benefit, the, the, the shared benefit. Administrative body. Why? Because each, for example, if you look at the UMPADEC, all mineral producing areas development corporation. Commission, which is directed towards making benefit for the Niger Delta. All the mineral will be company. You see that there will be a body that will be created by the law. The body created by the law will now administer that scheme. And it's through the law that that administrative body is structured. It is through the law that they will say the officials that will the qualifications of the officials that will run the scheme and how they will be recruited of the officials that will run the scheme that will run the scheme and how they are going to be recruited now these these are the areas the law comes in system of taxation to get money for the for the that will be used for the benefit who are the beneficiaries and the qualifications or concerns they have to meet before they can become beneficiaries? Structure the administrative body and then qualification of the officials that will run the scheme and how they will be recruited. Now, these are various areas the law will step in in order to ensure that this social benefit is properly defined. According to Farah, the process of doing this requires interpretation of statutes. Because it's a statute that will say we are going to give, we are going to create the education trust fund. And once you say you are interpreting a statute, you've come into the area of law. Is that okay? Do you understand this scheme? Do you understand this particular what we've just discussed? Do you understand conferral of some benefit technique? 